Hello everybody, the Vinyl Community, John here. Um, this is a video about a collection of records that I'm going to show now. I'm going to call this 70s Rock. It's, um, yeah, it's not particularly classic rock or prog or anything like that. So it's sort of a bit of a mixture of a few different things. Um, while I'm doing that, I'm listening to this. This is Mahogany Rush, very kindly sent to me by Pete, um, music from the West Coast, and um, oh, I've been digging this, this arrived a couple of weeks ago in the post, thank you very much Pete, they're very kind of you to send this. Um, Mahogany Rush, they, I don't know much about them, but I think I've got one or two of the records. This has a very sort of Hendrix, kind of Hendrix groove to it. Um, I th yeah, I don't think I would be wrong to say that there's some sort of Hendrix inspiration to their music. Great stuff, been enjoying that. So that's what we're listening to. Uh, right, where should I start? Okay, we'll start with this one. So this is, I don't leave. This is um, Lord Such and Heavy Friends. Um, this one's been kicking about in my inbox for a, quite a long time now. Um, so this guy here is screaming Lord Such. He, and that's his stage name. Bit of an outrageous character. He's formed his own political party. Well, he's dead now, but he formed a political party called the Monster Raving. Most Reading Loony Party. Um, and he had lots of incredible music friends um, because he managed to form a band with them when they weren't sort of playing in their own respective bands. Uh, I'm talking about people like Keith Moon, Richie Blackmore, Noel Redding, Matthew Fisher. Um, Jimmy Page was involved in this too, I know that. Um, and lots of musicians of that calibre all just you know turning up and playing on his record for him while he sort of sang and screamed over a lot of it now the album that came out before this by screaming lord such um, has been credited as being i think the worst album ever made so this is that kind of difficult second album this album is not so bad you have to be in the right frame of mind i think to listen to this it's very sort of Blues, uh, blues rock basically, lots of jamming. It's basically a carriage for this character to have all these kind of crazy antics over it. The second half of this is live, and apparently he recorded it and he knew it was being recorded, but the people playing on it weren't aware of it, so they were surprised when he actually released it on this record. So, so what do you think of this? Next record I'm going to show is this. This is Stackwaddy. 
Um, this, yeah, was an, an amazing find. Car boot sale. Um, this man stood beside his car, his table, his bric-a-brac and stuff, and he had two records, and this was one of them. Uh, I said, how much are your records? And he said, oh, four pound each. Um, so I took this one home with me. I'd, I'd heard the name Stackwaddy, but I didn't know what it was. And now, essentially what it is, this, this came out in 1971, so it's a very early sort of blues rock uh, of the kind of Led Zeppelin vein, I suppose. Although, I don't know, there's a lot more lows to the highs, but uh, it's, it's not a bad record. Um, it's mainly uh, it's mainly sort of um, instrumental. I mean, there's some crooning on it, but not an awful lot. It's the original UK press, really good shape. There's the label. And um, I spent four pounds on it. I've since discovered when I come home, like copies of this original UK press in this condition are going for two or three hundred pound each. You know, so I got I struck lucky there. Not bad record at all, Stackwaddy. Next record's a little bit of an unusual one. This is Graham Edge, Graham Edge Band. He's uh, yeah the drummer from the Moody Blues. Um, you could be forgiven for thinking this is going to be in sort of progressive rock vein, but apparently it's not. Discogs don't call it progressive rock. Uh, it's not listed on um, Prog Archives anywhere. This band. Um, so, although it is, I would, I would call it at the very least prog related, to be honest with you, but um, hey, who am I at the end of the day, I'm just a music fan. Great, really sprightly music, this is good, uh, this sort of, after that Stackwaddy <laughs> misery record, uh, this is really quite cheerful and bright, so uh, have, a little, have a little listen to this, it might cheer you up.
record that came my way. It's got an interesting backstory. So it's a couple that uh, my wife got to know through her surf life saving group. Um, they'd moved here to Wales from South Africa. Um, he, the, the, so the guy was, was actually British, but he'd lived in, in South Africa for well, most of his adult life, I guess. Um, and his wife was born in South Africa. And they moved here, I don't really know why. Um, but the point is, they moved into a rented house. And if you've ever rented a house or a you know, flat or anything like that, you often get mail coming from the people that lived there before. Now this arrived in the post addressed to the man that lived there before. And he never come to get it, he never come to collect it or anything like that. They told him it had arrived, but he didn't come. Uh, and they knew that I collected records. They say, hey John, do you want to have this record? I don't turn down free records and buy anybody. So I said, yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, it's not bad at all. It's so little feet. I don't know much about them. I don't think I've got anything else by them in my collection. Um, I've always thought them as a bit like, you know, the sort of yacht rock type music, like um, Steely Dan type thing. Um, but this is got quite a lot of uh, sort of southern rock quality to it. Uh, sort of Leonard Skinner's Almonds type stuff going on too. Uh, yeah. If there's anybody out there that know Little Feet, let me know uh, which of their records I should look out for next. Okay. This was quite an unusual find, I suppose. So this is Bill Nelson's Red Noise. Bill Nelson played guitar in um, uh, Bebop Deluxe. I don't know much about Bebop Deluxe. I do have a few of their albums. George Scott Spinner sent me um, a compilation on CD. James Griffiths sent me actually a box set of their Sunburst um, album on CD. That's the one with the naked lady and the guitar. And I actually think I've got their first two albums on vinyl too. I just haven't spent that much time with them. I think I struggle with them a little bit because they're a bit hard to define. <laughs> Shallow as I am, I like <laughs> I like to know what what I'm listening to. Now this, I've heard people sort of say you know, they're, they're progressive or they're you know they're quite proggy in places that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. All I can say is this sounds very punky. Now I've heard that people say that this. It's the first, so it's Bill Nelson's first solo album after um, uh, Bebop Deluxe, and they say that it pretty much continues on the progression from the last uh, Bebop Deluxe album. Um, I haven't heard that one, so I can't comment. But I will say it doesn't really sound very proggy, it sounds actually quite punky to me. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a whole group, a whole sort of, you know, area of music. Like, I haven't really got to yet, but uh, I'll get I'll get there one day. Don't you worry about that. Um, and this is quite a fun record to have to add to the collection. I'm sure you know in time I'll come to really see its <coughs> amazing value. <laughs> Boomtown Rats, it's their third album, uh, The Fine Art of Surfacing. Um, <coughs> excuse me, um, James Griffiths 
uh, in one of his most recent videos, showed I think the first Boomtown Rats album. Um, don't hear a lot about the Boomtown Rats on um, on the vinyl community. I often wonder why. In fact, yeah, I think my comment to James when he showed the, the Boomtown Rats record on his was that. You know, if Bob Geldof hadn't event, invented Live Aid, he probably wouldn't even know who he was these days. Um, but uh, yeah, they started off as a sort of a punk band. I think the first, second were quite punky. Um, by this time, it's sort of heading into the uh, the, uh, the type of new wave that would, you know, become a big feature in uh, on MTV, that type of thing. Uh, not a bad record. Look out for Boomtown Rats. Um, then what else have we got? Oh yeah, so these last few records, they're quite special. I picked these up at the bookshop in my next village, um, a long that sells records in the corner. And yeah, it's The Stranglers. This is their first album. I've been seeing a few different people showing The Stranglers and talking about them. I don't know much about them. I know that there's always been this debate about are they punk or not. Um, I could see why people might think they, they are or they were punk. Um, I think in many ways, yeah, they're probably more of a pop rock band. Um, like Eddie and the Hot Rods, for instance. They just happen to be there playing their you know, slightly angrier, slightly aggressive kind of pop rock music. Um, at the same time as, as what you know the punk was happening, um, I yeah I liken it to the similar situation with Japan. You know Japan, uh, people always point to them and say they're a, a, a new wave, uh, a new romantic synth pop band, and um, they they never were they never were connected to the new new romantic movement like Duran Duran or Spandau Ballet, uh, Ultravox. They were completely separate. Um, they just happened to have a similar kind of um, roots, you know, like they were listening back to what Bowie was doing in the, in the 70s and uh, Roxy music and reflecting upon that. So it's quite a similar place to be coming from, but they just had a different different issue altogether. And I think that's the same with, with Stranglers and Punk. Um, that's my take on it anyway pick these up at that uh, bookshop very glad to have them can't say that I've listened to them that much I find that they're they're apart from that, that this is one I picked up in the car boot sale coincidentally so it's like the greatest hits this goes down really well in the family home you know people kids my wife has got some really nice tracks and nice singles we like them but I notice if I put the Stranglers albums on they're a bit kind of it's just not easy listening, and it doesn't go down so well, <laughs> you know. So um, I've got to spend some time on my own reflecting on these two and reabsorbing them. Okay, all right. Well, that's my records. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Check out my next video, and uh, okay, bye.